I'm Trevor Maynard and I'm the manager of Emerging Risks at Lloyds of London. The Emerging Risks team is looking into all forms of risk that may come in the future. It's um, things like nanotechnology, uh, pandemics, genetic modification, but in particular climate change is one of our major focuses and we've done quite a lot of work in that field. So climate change really underlies the interconnected nature of both the financial services industry and also the wider industry. Everyone has to work together and in fact it's the secondary and tertiary impacts of climate change that are very hard to think through and you need to get the right minds in the room to, to think about how the impacts will work. Professor David Smith is one of the leading scientists um, in terms of the impact of climate change on the oceans. We find Working with him and similar scientists is absolutely crucial because they open our eyes to all the, all the issues out there. I'm David Smith. I'm Professor of Geography at the University of Oxford and my particular interest is in sea level change. The latest research seems to indicate that sea level will rise by about two metres by the year 2100. There's been some dispute about this, of course. There always is in science but uh, that's the figure to which most seem to subscribe. We get falls and rises in the level of the sea uh, due to climate and in particular of course it's the growth and decay of ice over the millennia which have affected the level of the oceans and seas of the world. The Greenland and the West Antarctic ice sheets may deliver rather more to the oceans than had previously been thought and also I think that the temperature rise globally is probably a little bit more than had previously been thought. So these tend to increase the estimates of sea level rise. The storm surge um, is uh, a rise in the level of the sea surface greater than expected uh, for the tidal circumstances of the time. Storm surges can be extremely important and the one we all quote uh, is the 1953 storm surge which had an enormous impact and caused the loss of some 300 lives along the eastern coast of the United Kingdom and over a thousand lives in the Netherlands. Is it fair to say that the storm surges we've seen in Hurricane Katrina and Ike recently would have been exacerbated by this sea level rise? Certainly. I think that uh, in the case of, uh, of hurricanes like that, of storm surges associated with them, the likelihood of flooding uh, and of long-term effects on structures and so on will be that much greater. So in consequence, we may find that on top of any sea level rise we may estimate, uh, the higher incidence um, of storms will be very serious indeed for coastal communities. Early on in the climate change debate, um, people focused on mitigation, which is the reduction of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases. And this is absolutely critical. We're not claiming it isn't. However, there's 40 years of climate change due to the in thermal inertia in the oceans. We can't get away from that. We're going to see climate changes, and therefore we need something else. We need to adapt our properties to the change in risk that we're going to see. I'm Tim Reader and I'm the Regional Climate Change Programme Manager for the Environment Agency. There's a lot of talk globally about mitigation of cutting carbon dioxide, but the debate about adaptation was slower to get off the ground. Do you have any views as to why for some time people didn't take adaptation seriously? Well, there was the obvious issue that, you know, the sceptics giving confused messages and also, I think, you know, a view that if, if we talked about adaptation then people concentrate on adapting and forget to mitigate. Uh, but, of course, the essential thing is we have to do both and we, we won't succeed if we just ignore, ignore one arm, so we must adapt. So around this area, what would happen um, if the Thames Barrier wasn't here? What, would this be flooded? There's a vast area in the middle of London that is vulnerable to uh, flooding from the river and if we didn't have the Thames Barrier, that we'd have a very low level of defence through the middle of London. It's estimated that if we had a flood from storm surge affecting London, the losses could be at least 30 billion. And there's at least 80 billion pounds worth of property protected by the Thames Barrier, probably more. Are the terms resilience and resistance well known to you? Because um, we, we've had those as different types of adaptation. Can you explain those at all? 
Well, they're, they're both very important tools to use in trying to adapt to uh, flood risk. Obviously, with uh, resistance, you're trying to keep the water out of your property. But another very strong way of doing it is to make your house resilient. I think in the past, uh, policies have not encouraged a sort of sustainable behaviour in trying to uh, refit your house in a, in a resilient way. And as an insurer, we've got an opportunity to help people in a claim situation. That's the ideal opportunity to re-engineer um, re the house with those resistant measures um, in place. So some people say that you can insure your way out of climate change, but, but the point is with, with insurance is that it, it spreads risk around, it, it fairly shares it amongst different people. What it doesn't do is reduce the overall level of risk, and that's why adaptation and mitigation hand in hand is the only way to really tackle climate change. The report is called Coastal Communities and Climate Change and then there's a subtitle which is Maintaining Future Insurability. And the reason we've put this together is to illustrate how sea level rise will very much impact the level of risk for coastal communities. RMS are a leading catastrophe modelling firm. Um, they employ uh, experts in climate change. They helped us a lot in, in framing the report, doing the, a lot of the analysis, and then we jointly worked on it to, to actually write the report together. My name's Celine Hawaya. I'm the director of the climate change practice for risk management solutions. This report really turns the focus on adaptation, which has a big impact on the insurance industry. One of the key conclusions of the report is that if there is no adaptation at all, losses from coastal flooding in some near coastal properties will almost double by the 2030s. That's a huge amount. Uh, another key result is that losses can actually be reduced below present day if we start investing in the right kind of adaptation in the right areas. Adaptation has to be risk informed. There is no one size fits all solution for adaptation. Uh, it really has to be informed by the local environment and what is the cost effective decision for that particular local environment, whether it's investing in hard defences or individual adaptation for homes, improving their resilience or resistance to flooding. So it's really thinking holistically. What we have to do now is, is raise awareness on, on the value of adaptation uh, and try to think about how the insurance industry and catastrophe modelers like RMS can help governments and policymakers and individuals protect the, the economy or their homes from the impacts of climate change. Because we come from a, a business where we know about risk and we know about managing risk. And so this is a, an area where we really can apply our expertise to help society as a whole. If we don't adapt, we're going to get more frequent flooding, which is going to cause the current level of damages in a magnified way, whereas if we can cut down our exposure, we're going to be a better, much better place to cope. I believe that uh, the insurance community is probably better placed than most to the alleviation of some of the problems uh, that people will face. We see the benefits of adaptation straight away. Straight away your risk is reduced. Straight away insurers, for example, gain because risk is reduced. Straight away people become more protected against the extremes of weather and climate. Within the insurance industry, we have um, worked together with a number of other insurers and the ABI to create something called the ClimateWise principles. And they are a set of principles under which insurers will run their businesses to help manage the risk of climate change. It's a change of, of mindset, it's a change of how we do things that we need to do with climate change.